Good morning, <clears throat> Bethel. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good to see everybody. And God will make a way. Yes, he will. But sometimes in order for God to make a way, his workers got to be willing to work. Oh, no amen off of that, huh? God ain't going to do it all by itself. He wants you to work for him. And when you begin to work for him, that's when <clears throat> he opens up doors for you and provides then exactly what it is you need to get started and to do the work. God will provide. But he wants to see us take a step forward. <clears throat> it's just like when we commit ourselves to almighty God. We have to take the step forward. And when we do, he receives us just the way we are. We don't have to change nothing. All we have to do is go to him and say, yes, Lord. And he changes us. And when we say, yes, Lord, I want you, he receives us. But he wants us to come. And you know, when you do it, when you come to him, you come because he has called you. He has called you. And when you answer the call, he receives you just the way you are. And he does all the repairing and all the fixing up. All the rules and regulations that man can write down and govern doesn't mean a thing if you don't have Christ in your life and willing to be obedient to him. Our outlaws and hooligans today. They do what they do because they don't want to be obedient to anybody. They want to be in charge, so they think. But you can't make it that way. You can't make it that way. But when you give your life to Christ, when you make a dedication to him, he really makes a difference in your life. And he can do things. But we have to step forward to him. You heard the reading of the scriptures in Mark chapter 8 and starting at verse 34. Then he called the crowd to him along with his disciples and said, whoever, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. He wants more than a church membership. He wants more than being a member of a denomination. He wants you to be a disciple of his. Anyone who believes in Jesus is his disciple. But you have to truly believe in Jesus and who God is. God wants more than a member. He wants a disciple. He wants someone who is willing to share the gospel with somebody. He wants someone who is going to love one another as we love ourselves, just as Christ loved us. He wants us to share that love with others. To be a disciple of Jesus Christ is a 24 seven job. It never ends, it never stops, and you gotta do it constantly. And when you somebody pushes your right buttons and you get an attitude, remember that you are a disciple of Jesus Christ. And you have to sit down and have a little talk with Jesus. 
Don't always retaliate or answer in anger or when you have an ad attitude. Just take time to have a little talk with Jesus, to get quiet and to think about what you're going to say before you say it. But don't answer when you're angered because normally when we do it that way, we're going to say something that we're going to have to apologize for later and that we're going to have to eat crow. So don't do it. When we are a disciple of Jesus Christ, we are special. We are special and we are privileged. If you don't feel that way, then become a disciple of Jesus Christ. Because when you are, you are special. Because you belong to God. Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves. And you know, that's one part right there that we all find hard to do. Denying ourselves. Because when there's something that we want, we want it in the worst way. And we'll do what we can to take and get what we want or to get close to it. But to be, be, the, be a disciple of our Lord, we must deny ourselves and take up our cross and follow him. And our cross could be any number of things or any number of things. We all have a cross to bear. And I dare say they probably not are all the same cross. We each got our own cross. But we have to bear it. And when we are a disciple of Jesus Christ, when we are a follower of his, no matter what our cross is, he will carry us through it. He will take us through it. You hear me say this often enough, but it's the truth. God is the answer to everything that we have to go through. And he is always there with us, no matter what. But to take up our cross and to follow him. And he says in verse 35, Whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me, whoever loses their life for me, for the gospel, will save it. We are all going to depart from this world. But we do not have to depart from our Lord and Savior. We can be with him for an eternity. That's why he tells us we can lose this old life here on earth. And if we don't believe in him, we lose everything. It's done. But if we believe in him, we depart from this temporary existence and we go to a permanent existence for an eternity with our God and Savior. There's a difference. There's a mighty difference. Which is it do you want? Which is it? Whoever loses their life for me. But whoever loses their life for me. For the gospel. Will save it. Any other way you lose. And what sense does it make. To be a millionaire. And lose your soul. And forfeit your soul. 
Because you see, money can't buy you into heaven. Good works can't buy you into heaven. Your faith in God can. And what does that cost you? Just being faithful to God. Just when you commit to him and say, yes, Lord, that you stay faithful to him. And being obedient. I'm not telling you anything that you don't already know. All I'm saying to you is we have to live it and not just read about it, but we have to live it. We have to put God's word to use and not just read it as a good book because it's more than a good book. It's life. It's living. When you are following Christ and being obedient to him and listen to his commands and put his word to work in your life, don't you know that even in this whole world, things go a whole lot better? Because of who you are. Because Christ being in your life, he takes you through the ups and downs. He's always with you to keep things at the right even till. He's always there. He never leaves you. But he's always with us. And we sometimes forget that God is with us by the way we act by the way we talk to one another, by the things that we say. Sometimes we forget that God is with us and he hears us and he knows us and we can't hide from him and we can't hide our thoughts from him. He knows everything that's on our mind. But if we stay close to him, he will definitely be close to us. Just like the woman said, all I had to do is just to touch the hem of his garment and I know I'll be, be healed. Just as the centurion said, Lord, all I know you have to say it and I know my servant will be healed. You just have to say it. We have to have that kind of faith and belief in God. That if he says it, it's going to happen. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And I will take care of all your needs. But you have to do something for me to receive all that. Salvation is free. But there's things we still have to do living for God in order for him to bless us and to watch over us. Sometimes he does things for us to get our attention. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we get our his attention and he does what we want and we get things done and then we get happy and we forget all about who God is mm -hmm. until the next time when something comes up. Mm -hmm. We worship God on a Sunday. But what about Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday? Who are we paying attention to then? You heard me say before, do you spend at least an hour with God every day? That's not much. I'm not talking about reading scriptures that you're not going to follow anyway. I'm talking about are you going to pay, really pay attention to God and be obedient to him? It's not easy being a Christian. It's not easy being a follower of Christ, but it can be. It can be. When you become dependent upon God and you have faith in him, 
life can get easier because the problems of today are not enough to deter you. But you got to have faith in God and trust in him. As in verse 36, as it says, what good is it for someone to gain the whole world, yet forfeit their soul? <laughs> because you can have the whole world. And if you rebel against God, you're going to hell for eternal damnation. No two ways about it. That's what will happen. Well, in that case, you can have all my money. I ain't got none anyhow. But what little bit is there, you can have. I want to go and be in heaven. I want eternal life with my God. Because when I leave here, everything that I have in the world will stay here. I won't be here. I'm gone. As much as I leave, love my family, got to leave them. I got to go. When God calls me, I'm, I'm out of here. I can't buy it back. Can't wish it back. Don't want to wish it back. I'm out of here. Because it does me no good to have the world and don't have a soul and don't have belief in God and we have rebelled against him because I'm damning myself if I do walk away from God. My God will never turn me away as long as I stay connected to him. You can't give anything in exchange for your soul. And God tells us in verse 38 that if anyone is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of them when he comes in his Father's glory with the holy angels. Sooner or later, each one of us will make the same journey in leaving this world and facing our God. Whether you are a believer or an unbeliever, you will have to come before God Almighty. Will you pass his tests? That when he asks you, what have you done to share my gospel with someone? What have you done? What will you be able to say? Not what your parents did or grandparents or aunts and uncles or relatives. No matter what somebody, what did you do? What did you do? What will you be able to say? Will you have anything to say to him in response to his question? We will all have to face him one day. All of us. And you know how sometime in, in school, the teachers would give you that pop quiz. And... If you didn't do your homework or do your studying, you didn't want to have nothing to do with that pop quiz. You wanted to try to talk them out of. But if you studied and you was ready, you could have cared less about that pop quiz because you had the confidence that you could pass it. Well, do you have the confidence to pass cards and tests? And it's not going to be a pop test because you know it's coming. Are you going to be ready for it? Will you be ready for it? Will you really be a disciple of Jesus Christ? 
Are you my disciple? Because that's more than just being a member of a church or a denomination, being a disciple of Jesus Christ. It means that you have been following his commands, living by his word, loving as he loved us. And you know, it's that agape love that you love someone, that you respect them, that you treat them right. And you don't look for any reward because God gives you the reward. God tells you, when you have done God's word and been good and been a good disciple, God blesses you and he blesses you internally. He gives you a satisfaction that supersedes anything man could ever give to you. And he gives you such a feeling and you're blessed. And it's truly a blessing when God blesses you. So he wants us to be a disciple of his. And he tells us in chapter 9 in the first verse. Truly I tell you, some who are standing here will not taste death before they see that the kingdom of God has come with power. Have you felt the love of Jesus Christ in your life? When you gave yourself to him, did you feel special when God touched you? I'm not talking about man. I'm talking about God. When God touches you, when he lets you know that the kingdom that you are seeking, part of that kingdom is within you. If you have opened up completely to God. Part of that kingdom is in you. The rest of it you'll receive when you fall into his presence. When you leave this whole world and go to be with him. But you can have part of God in your life, in your heart right now. You do have him when you received him. And accepted him. And he blessed you with the Holy Spirit. You have part of the Father. Inside of you living. And he guides us. And directs us. And when we're obedient to him. He does. Each and every day. He takes us through. All the trials and tribulations. That come our way. He will walk us through. If you have any doubt, just get quiet. Have a little talk with Jesus and tell him about your troubles. Tell him how you feel and what you're going through. Tell him, and he already knows, but tell him anyhow, because it's good for you. When you truly, when you truly turn it over to him, let it alone, and God will do the rest. God will do the rest. The hardest thing for us to do is we turn it over to God, but then I'm going to fix it anyhow. I'm going to fix it. Then you didn't really turn it over to God. If you're going to fix it, you didn't turn it in over to God. So don't think that you did. If you turned it over for God, then you left it alone. Just as a, the saying goes, let go and let God have his way. Because our way, our way is not the right way. But God's way is the right way. Let go and let God. But I stress this. That when you're in prayer and you have a talk with the Lord, 
and you turn things over to him, oh, praise to God, let it alone then. Let it go. God will tell you what you need to do. And then follow his, follow his command. Follow what he's telling you to do. And when you do all that, the trouble that's there, the cross that you picked up will get a little lighter and then get repaired. But only God can do it. Because you see, when we try to fix it ourselves, majority of the time, we're going to say something that we shouldn't have said. No matter how many good intentions or how good intended it may have been. Sometimes we just don't say it the way God would say it. But when we turn it over him, we have to let God have it, and then we have to step away from it and watch God fix it. And he will fix it. He will do it, no matter what it is. And you know, sometimes we always wait till we get into trouble before we go to God. We need to go to God before. Not after. We always know who he is when it's afterwards. When we're in trouble, we know. But go to him before. And then be obedient to him. Be obedient. In John, the 13th chapter, in verse 35, it says, By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Love one another. And love covers a multitude of sins, but truly love one another. Be careful what you say to somebody. Be careful what you say and how you say it. Be careful what you say and how you say it. Because it's tough eating crow when you come back and got to eat the words that you share with someone. But always have that talk with Jesus first. And by doing that, our God will always be there for us. He will always be watching over us. He will always take care of us. He will always take care of our needs. Not our wants, but he will always take care of our needs. And if we trust him and have faith in him, we live a different life, a peaceful life a joyful life that God gives to us. Man's is only temporary. Is only temporary because man will give it to you today and five minutes from now and take it away from you again. But God's peace and joy when he gives it, nobody can take that away from you. You have to give it up but nobody can take it when God gives it to you. And the peace he gives you passes all understanding. And that peace that you live with inside of you that God gives to you, nobody can touch. And it matters not what anybody says to you, how they say it, no matter what, when you have God's peace, and your faith is in him, you can go through anything, anything, anything. Now, I ain't going to say there's stuff that don't rile you up a little bit because that'll happen. But if you're in Christ, that being riled up ain't going to last. 
It's not going to last. It's not going to last. But God's peace will. God's peace will. May each of you have God's peace and joy in your life. From now until the time you meet him in person. And be with him. But it's a beautiful thing that's waiting for us. And all we have to do to receive it is to accept our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, our God, our Father. All we have to do is to accept him. And when we do, he gives us a peace and a joy and a new way to do things, a new way to live. But it's all good. And you know there's people who don't know him as their personal savior. And you should know him as your personal savior. You should welcome God into your life, into your very being, and into your daily walk. That when you plant your feet on the floor in the mornings, to thank God that he woke you up. And when you have him in your life, I don't know if you remember how you felt when you first committed to the Lord. But I know it made you feel good. I know it excited you. And know, I know you wanted it for others. But continue to hold on to that enthusiasm of the first day that you committed to God. To hold on to it. Your faith should get stronger and stronger each day. And every time God does something for you, thank him for it. And your faith gets stronger. Your trust gets stronger. And when you give your life to him, when you make a commitment to him, and remember that when you make a commitment to God, it's not to a denomination or to a church, or to a preacher. It's to God. It's to God. That's who you're making a commitment to, is to God. And when you do, he throws his arms around you and completely receives you into the family. Into the family. And he is with you wherever you go. And whenever you want to talk to him, he's always, always available. His line is never too busy that he can't have a little talk with you. And he's interested in everything that you want to talk about. There's no problem too small or too big for our God. So don't let Satan trick you into saying, well, you can handle this. This, this God's too busy for this. You can handle this. And don't let him trick you into that. No matter how small it is, talk to the Lord about it. No matter how big it is, talk to the Lord about it. And talk to the Lord about everything in between. Because he is listening. And he wants to have that conversation with you. Trust him. Because he loves you. Have faith in him. Because he wants to do for you. Walk with him. And he will walk with you. And when you get tired and grow weak, he will pick you up and carry you. And then when you're strong enough again, he will set you back down. But he'll never leave you and he'll never forsake you. Gracious and heavenly Father, in the precious name of Jesus, Lord God, we thank and praise you for the day, Lord God, for another Sunday to be able to worship you, Lord God. But Father God, we ask you to be with us through the week, Lord God, 
that we worship you not only on Sundays, but on the rest of the week, Father. Heavenly Father, continue to be with us as we know you already are. You never leave us alone, but you're always with us. Continue to be with us, Lord God. Continue to watch over us, Lord. Continue to guide us through this old world. Father God, we thank you. Continue to bless this country. Bless thy people, Lord. Bless those who had hard times during this, this summer, Father. Continue to be with them, Lord, as they continue to rebuild and continue to do. Lord, we thank and praise you, Father. Continue to walk with us, Lord, to strengthen us, Father. Encourage us in all that we do. Heavenly Father, we bless you, we magnify you, and we worship you. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.